Hey friends, today's video is Sunlight Tips Teaching Multiple Cores. Hey friends, I'm Stacy, and today I have a couple tips I'm going to be giving you guys for using sunlight, uh, using two different cores to teach your children. And so I have both cores here to show you, the two that I am using. And um, I just want to give you guys some tips and talk about how I do it. And if you're doing it, hopefully this will give you guys ideas of how you can do it and you can learn from this video. So why did I choose to use a literature-based program? A single book can distill the wisdom of a lifetime in just a few pages, offer insight and perspective unlike our own, and open doors to delight and discovery. What are the results of a literature-based education? Individuals who are highly inquisitive and invested in learning for life. And in the past, I would often talk about like, for my children, my goal with homeschooling them is that they would enjoy learning and that they'd be able to learn for the rest of their life, be able to know how to learn something. And I feel that with a literature-based program, they become very interested in the story, they connect with it, and they want to know more. And when children or adults, when you learn through story and you connect with it emotionally, you're much more easily able to retain the information that you learned. Outstanding books and delightful stories are a great centerpiece for learning. It helps to make learning come alive. Stories give us context or information and it creates an emotional connection for the students with the story that helps them to be able to retain the information a lot better. What I really like about learning through reading through a vast array of different types of books is that it creates a foundation for comprehension and critical thinking in every arena of life. Humans are wired for stories. Okay, so getting into my tips for teaching multiple cores is the first one is to combine kids when possible. And so as you can see, I have two different cores here. So my younger core, this is the preschool core T, and I use this one with my I use this one with my two younger boys. This is my um, preschooler and kindergartner, and we do this one together with them. And they are two years apart, and this works really good. They're both able to understand it. They both can enjoy the stories that are in here. I'll talk more about that here in a minute. And then my other core is my twin boys who are in fourth grade. I have them combined, and we do this core together with them. So I have four children, but I'm only doing two cores. And so one of the big benefits of doing this is there's a lot less reading. If I was doing four cores with four kids, um, or even three cores, that would be a lot more reading. And so two cores, it does it, it is a lot of reading, but we do enjoy it, and it's doable. Okay, so my second tip is those big binders are too big to carry around and they stay over my bookshelf. So I recommend having a working binder. I have two working binders. You could combine them into one working binder. This here is just a five star notebook that I got off Amazon and these clips here can open and close. I think they have them at Staples also. And I put in about one month's worth of the sunlight schedule in at a time and then once a month I'll switch it out. I also put in like the reader questions and the read aloud comprehension questions and our science is in here. Everything like sunlight is in here and then I have easy reference for it. And so the one is for the core D that I do with my twins and the other one is for my core T that I do with the two little boys. This here then I keep in my morning basket, which stays close to our table and our couch where we do our reading. And then also just the books that we're using stay in there. And I will talk about that a little bit more later. Okay, my third tip is combined for Bible time. So I like to, in the morning, have everyone come. We have a school room, but if you do it like in your living room or your kitchen table, I like to gather everyone together, um, all four of my boys, and they can sit on the floor, sit on the couch, sit at the table, whatever they want, and have something to play with, where they're kind of playing quietly, but they're engaged and they're listening and they're quiet. And so I can read the little preschool, their Bible story thing to them. And then also um, we go over, so we go over our prayer thing. This here is from Core D. And then this here is also from Core D. This here I usually will read ahead of time and summarize and we do those discussion questions together. And my little ones, they don't, maybe don't always understand everything in here, but they are, it's amazing how much they do understand. And then for the Bible memory, I, instead of doing two different um, Bible memory things, I pick one and I have it over here on my board on the wall. And so we have just a Bible memory verse that we are all working together on for one or two weeks, depending how long it is. And then I also do a song that I have up there. Sometimes we do poetry um, in a sunlight guide. I believe this coming week, we're supposed to start working on a poem for the next six or eight weeks, I believe, I forget what it is, in Core D. And so I need to get that printed out and put up. Um, with Sunlight D, there also is a song for the Bible memory. And so sometimes we'll listen to that. We don't do it every day. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. So for the Bible uh, portion, again, what I do is I read 
like one from the preschool core and one from the other core, one from the younger core, one from the older core. As far as the books go, we'll go back and forth. And then another idea that we do sometimes um, in the past is my husband would read this story in the evening out loud together at our family devotions. And then recently he started just reading directly from the Bible instead. And so now we move this back to doing it as part of our school again. But some days if my day is really full and push for time, I will just read this just to my two little ones. They sleep in a bedroom together and I'll read it with them just at bedtime, uh, just me and them too. And so there's multiple ways to do this. You don't have to do everything in the morning. Um, I do like to bring everyone together though in the morning and do some kind of Bible thing. But if we don't have time to do all the books in the morning, we'll save this one and I'll do it just the two little ones at bedtime. Does that make sense? Another little side tip is for well memory. If they're able to say their Bible verse by the end of the week, I have a little reward thing that I give them. And that really helps them to be motivated to do it. And then one more tip with the bowel memory, I have a checkoff list here that I just made these on Canva myself and printed them off. But each boy, my three older boys, all have to-do list. And this has to do with like their morning chores and also their schoolwork and things in the afternoon. But one of the things on here is the bowel memory. And so they have to go through, read it out loud and practice saying it a few times on their own. Uh, independently. That's like part of their independent work. We also sometimes will go over it together, um, but it doesn't happen every day. And so this way they're for sure working on it every day, whether or not we do it as a whole family together. Okay, tip number four is use audiobooks. So I know in the States you can sometimes get audiobooks through the Libby app from your library, and sometimes I can find audiobooks on there. Most of the Sunlight ones are not on there here. I have a lot less options of which ones that I can pick here in Cambodia off the Libby app, but we use Audible a lot, and it is worth it to buy one or two of the main books that you're going to be using that year if it's on Audible and just to be able to have that as a backup. If one day you're feeling sick and you can't read or if you're traveling, it's really nice. You can listen to it in the car. You can, if you get behind, you can easily catch up or even get ahead a little bit. And then also another way that we use Audible a lot is in the evening at bedtime, we have an Alexa in the boys' bedroom and they listen to stories on there a lot. Some of them are sunlight stories, some of them are just other stories. But if there is a sunlight book that they really enjoy and would want to listen to it again and again, it is fun to get it on Audible and they can listen to it again and it helps them to be able to comprehend the story a lot better. Uh, one thing I also like to do if I have a book on Audible is even during our school time, during our read aloud time, when I'm reading to them and they're playing on the floor and stuff, is go ahead and just play it off my phone. And it gives me a minute to kind of like clean up from one thing and get ready for the next thing. And I'm right there, they're there, we're all listening to it, we all can comprehend the story, but it allows me to get two things done at once. The story is getting read and I'm able to like clean up one activity and get ready for the next activity. So yeah, use audiobooks. That really is a great tool. Okay, my tip number five is read all the books together. So I usually will have everyone gather, or at least for sure my three older ones, gather together for our read aloud time. And I like to have them, they can sit on the couch back here, they can sit at the table, they can sit on the floor. And then we have like snap blocks or little matchbox cars or coloring, something, some activity they can work on while I am reading to them. And everybody can listen, everybody's engaged, and there's not somebody off in another part of the house screaming and hollering that needs a mom. Although that does happen, but less frequently if they're here and listening to the stories. And then when I have everybody gathered together, everybody is listening and engaged, playing with their things, being quiet. So maybe I'll go back and forth between the cores. Maybe I'll read like a chapter out of The Sign of the Beaver and they can listen. And even my six-year-old really enjoys this one. Uh, he enjoyed listening to that one too. His comprehension was probably less than what my twins were in fourth grade, but it's okay. He'll hear it again in the future when we do that core. And then I'll read the story out of George and Martha and everybody loves this book. The stories are so like cute and funny. And yeah, they, my twins really enjoy listening to these stories also. And then maybe I would read one from their history um, spine, the DK Smithsonian book, read out of here. And again, there's bright colorful pictures that people can look at. And then maybe we'll read our page of poems out of Mother Goose and then go back to reading the chapter out of whatever our next book is. So yeah, I just had a stack of books here to show you guys some of the different books um, that we might read from. Another idea when you're reading all the books together is you could do it like over breakfast or over tea time or while you're all having hot chocolate or some kind of snack. Find a time to gather everyone together where you can read. Okay, my tip number six is read ahead. So if you find there's a time when everybody's listening really well and everybody's really engaged, maybe for example, when you're reading Mother Goose, you could just go ahead and read two pages. Maybe on this particular day, they're really enjoying it. And then the next day you can skip it. That's one way to do it. Um, or if you're reading out of here, you only have to read a poem out of here once a week 
And so you could go ahead and do two if one day they're really engaged. Um, or you could have like a tea party and do a poetry tea time and go ahead and get two weeks worth knocked out, two poems. There's a section to go with the poem you have to read too. Um, that's just an idea. And then another, and then also in a book like this one where there's a lot of reading per day, it's a really thick book. This one is a great one to read ahead in two. For example, if you're spending time in the car or something like that, you can, if your husband's driving, you can read it or listen to an, an audiobook or read it aloud at bedtime and get ahead a little bit so it's less for the next day. Or if one day they're really engaged and the story's really interesting and they're saying, read another chapter, read another chapter, go ahead and do it. And then the next day, um, you can be ahead or skip a day or however you, you want to do that. But yeah, especially when they're really engaged, go ahead and read another page or chapter or poem. Or another option is when they're really engaged is to stop. So that way the next day they're really excited to come back to the book and be like, oh, we can't wait to read that book again. We want to see what's going to happen. Okay, my tip number seven is with the sunlight readers, go ahead and split that up. So for us, we do the Good and the Beautiful language arts, but we do the readers also with sunlight. And so with the Good and Beautiful language arts, it usually will say spend 20 minutes of reading. And so on the boys check off list things that I showed you guys earlier, they have an afternoon, they have to do some extra reading. And so that's a great time for them to do their readers from sunlight. It also makes it so that way in the morning, there's not as much to do where they got, they're like sitting still and doing a ton of reading that can be overwhelming and hard for them. And so it's great if you split it up, split up those times. So we do our read aloud, our Bible time, our read alouds in the morning, and then we go ahead and do our math language arts, have lunch, and then the afternoon they can do their readers from sunlight and so that's a one way to do that split up the readers the length with the language arts with whatever language arts you're doing okay so my tip number eight is the working binders and basket or cart so we keep the big sunlight binders over on the shelf and also all the core books together so like core d is on one shelf and then core t is on a different shelf all the books that we haven't read yet or have already read are on the shelf and then only the ones that we are currently using i keep over here in my basket and also the big core binders stay up on the shelf too because i don't want to carry those around and then i just have a working binder so my two working binders and they stay in my basket and then all of our sunlight books stay in here and any extra resources that i'm using every day um, like these cards up here so for example i have georgia martha in here and this goes with the preschool one and then i have um, other books in here that we're currently doing with cordy sarah whitaker's story tolliver's secret and the constitution so that is all just in here along with our science and a couple other things that are in here and it just makes it simple and easy to organize and I just grab this and I know what to grab each morning each day and I don't have to go through looking through my bookshelf pulling out which books exactly that we're going to need for that day. One note on that with Sunlight D there's multiple history cores and you use them maybe once or twice during the week and same with a poem book you're only using once a week and so I do keep these over on my shelf because I don't have room in my basket and we're only using it once or twice a week so if there's there's one book I need to pull out in the morning that's fine that's easy to do to go grab it and I don't have to look through all my books um, and then the rest are just in my basket okay and tip number eight is if you get behind have a makeup day so one idea that we do sometimes is we'll have a makeup day on Saturday if for some reason we had to skip school two or three times during the week and I'm just feeling a little behind so on Saturday we'll do one day's worth of just sunlight like not math and language arts and I'll tell the boys if they get done by x time let's say 11 o'clock then I'll take them swimming that afternoon or something fun like that or go get ice cream and it really motivates them it puts a positive twist on school we're just doing sunlight so it feels easy compared to a normal day but it also helps me to not feel like I'm quite so behind and we really enjoy the stories and the read alouds and stuff so it's not that hard it's not like a hardship okay and tip number nine is make a copy of the comprehension questions from the sunlight instructor's guide and keep it as a bookmark in the book you're reading and that way when you're doing two different cores even if you're just doing one core um, when you're done with that day's reading you can easily look on your bookmark your paper what the questions are and ask them to your children that way you for sure don't forget as quick and also with having multiple different books you're keeping track of multiple like your readers your read alouds and then two different cores it can be a lot and so if you copy that paper use it as a bookmark in your book it's really easy access all right, that is all I have for this video. Please give a thumbs up, leave a comment down below with your tips and ideas on how to use multiple cores. And yeah, I'm really glad that even though I'm teaching four children, I don't have to do four different cores. I can just do two different cores and it saves a lot of reading for me as the mom and we can all learn together. One thing that learning together really creates is a family bonding environment because we're learning together and then when the children are playing, the quicker act out a story from a book that they read and both children or all four children already know the reference, the story that they're trying to act out because they've 
all been learning it together. It's not like they've each been learning four different things. And so I really enjoyed that aspect of the family bonding that happens from learning together. All right, I hope this video was helpful and we'll see you guys again soon. Bye.